Good morning or good afternoon, wherever you may be, or good evening or good night. This is Jen at Jen's Arty Inclinations, a place to create, share and play. Hello, hello, hello. Well, this is what I started out to show you in this video. Just a really simple, I think it's called a chain binding stitch. And, you know, I had this book that I'd done as a little prototype. I'd covered the cover nicely and I'd sewn in the pages. So this is the one that I started to do a tutorial and I had all these really pretty pages. But look, when I was using my Big Bite, oh, went right through the spine and the pages and it was all on a big curve and all skew if. So now... This is actually a tutorial, would you call it a tutorial? I guess it's a way to show you how I've decided that I'm going to get around that. In our beautiful Facebook group, Playing With Paper and Glue, I say our, but it's actually Lynn's over at Playing With Paper and Glue YouTube, it's her group, but uh, I just help her admin over there. But I put in a photo of me having done this skew if and I was thinking oh maybe I can just paste paper over the holes and people came up with so many lovely suggestions and the amount of you who said that you've actually done it yourselves as well I was like I can't believe I did this I mean it's really obvious I have this really easy line that all I've got to do is hole punch on that line and would you believe I'd even made a template so I really shouldn't have mucked it up but from mistakes, we find that we get happy accidents. And so for this one, on the first page, this was an amazing suggestion, I thought, actually sewing through the holes. So that's what I did, I thought, on the front page because, you know, that's the cover page or the title page, I guess, is what you'd call it. So I thought that'd be a good one to have a go at doing that. So I did it as a double thread because then I thought I could kind of knot it off and tie a bow. I didn't do anything other than a normal, rather like a pamphlet stitch, I guess you'd call it. So then I just snipped it at the needle so that I could get the double end of the thread on both sides. And then I tied it off in a knot. So you'll see in a second that I snip off the actual needle so just at th just at the uh, th blah, 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 just at the thread there, and then I tied. I used one end to tie a bow, and then on the other side of the knot, I thought I'd tie a few things into it because I was really surprised how great that looked. Well, you know, I enjoyed it. It just added some more rusticness to this journal. Like it's got all that sewing on the edges of the pages and it's all rough and rustic anyway. So I thought, well, it needs a bit more lace and ribbon and so forth in it. So that was what I came up with for the cover. And then I liked it. So I thought I'd have a little play. What am I doing here? Oh yeah, I'm just adjusting it so that, you know, the threads sat the way that I wanted them to sit. So then I thought I'd play a little bit more with the front cover. Here, all I'm doing is I had some lace that was white and it was exactly the kind of thing I was looking for. So I just dipped it in coffee and then I let a tissue soak up all the excess water. And just to finish drying it, I just used a little heat gun on it. Oh no, I did show it. I was about to say you didn't see that because I did it off camera, but no. That's not true. I did it on camera. <laughs> All right. So then I thought, hmm, that's quite nice crinkly. And I had that bit of book page edge just near me. And I loved the look of that. So abracadabra, I decided to sew through that. See, abracadabra, do you get that? Because now you're back and you see it's sewn onto the ribbon. Okay, it's not really magic. Anyway... <laughs> I also had these really cute pressed violets. Now, actually, I think I bought these off eBay. I thought they were stickers and they were actual real pressed violets. Anywho, I love little pansies, I think they are, sorry. And I love them, so I thought they were fabulous and I just started sticking them on the cover. And it kind of just grew. When you look at it in the end, I probably overdid the title page a bit too much. However, this is just something that I want to keep in my handbag for myself. I want to have a little play with doing some, you know, different little journaling page ideas and also 
probably make a few lists for myself for Christmas. You know, it might be one or the other. It might just be an ideas book, you know, for December. So anywho, here I am doing my little violets. And actually, yeah, that's something I might do this year is um, Liesl's Dif Dif Dis December. Ephemera, or <laughs> you know, her challenge that she has with 49 dragons, I dragonflies, and I'm getting myself all confused. But anyhow, back to what I was doing, uh, I had stamped some words out on some brown paper, and so I thought that would be nice just with a little bit of calico behind it, and then I'm popping up a little bit of ribbon behind that piece. So I really love how this looked, and I really love putting book page, brown paper, calico, little lace snippets. I love putting that sort of stuff together. And I've even got some string in this. Now, the reason that I'm spreading out the glue, by the way, is because I did use the silicon glue there. It was the, I don't know what it's called, it's like the 49 something, but it's basically a silicon glue. It just helps hold fabric and because this is also backed onto a tracing paper that I have coffee dyed, which is sort of like vellum, and I just needed the extra hold, essentially. Now, see, I accidentally cut a bit of the flower off when I was trying to press it underneath this piece however i was really surprised it was fine it didn't need to be together it kind of added added a little bit of something something to it so all good again i'm using the same glue the silicon glue to attach this next piece so that is the lace i thought that'd just be really cute above the word breath just to add a little bit more vintage and texture to the piece and where I've tied up the lace in where I've threaded through there, I decided that I would just let that glue down on top just to help it all sit together a little bit. So now you kind of get the feeling that this is something of a lady of old, maybe in the 18th century or something. It's in, tucked in her drawer. These are flowers from her garden that she's just popping in and she'll make some notes and I'm sure that she'll love to do some pockets and tucks. <laughs> well, this old lady does anyway. So yeah, I just had a bit of fun really putting them all down and it was really nice to use these pressed flowers. And I even bought myself a kid's press, even though, you know, pressing flowers is so easy. Have you ever looked through an old book and come across where someone has actually pressed a flower in the book? And I used to do that when I was a kid. Mum and I used to oftentimes just hide little bits of flowers and leaves and things that we liked and put them in books. So I just, yeah, that's pretty special. You don't often come across them, but every so often you do. Anyhow, little one on the edge there. Now, what I ended up doing was I thought I'd seal in the flowers just to help them get a little bit more resistant. But of course, you do have to put up with the fact that you're going to get a little bit of shine over them then. Now, you could then go over them something, over them something, over them with something that could bring some of the mat back. You could even sand them down a little bit. But yeah, look, this is just to hold on to them and to just try and keep it nice since I've done the title page first. Oftentimes I just forget to do a title page, but since I've done it first, I may be flipping backwards and forwards through this a bit. So I did just want to preserve them and keep it together as, you know, as long as I could while I'm doing that. So there you go. That's the first page. Now I do have another couple of quick techniques that I used and I'll show you those and then you can just have a look at the first three pages. I've got quite a few more to go through. <laughs> But there you go, that's the little title page all together, which, look, I think it's come out quite cute. It does look very vintagey. So this was the second thing that I came up with. Again, very simple. I just wrapped a piece of lace around the page so that it went through both sides. And I do not know what I am going to do when I run out of this 
reel of lace that I have. I picked it up, I think, from Vinnie's and it was a lovely big thick piece and it is just perfect for paper edges for little title bits even for covering up your mistakes jen so yeah i think it's going to be quite sad when i have to say goodbye to it so i just cut it down and then i just tied it off i glued it on one side and that's a baking sheet that is between on the back there just so that i don't get you know so I don't glue the two pages together because obviously the glue will come through the lace. I'm retying here because I wanted the tails to just sit down a little bit and rather than completely opposite angles and it worked so that's good. So now I'm just adding a little bit of glue on the other side and again I'll just put another baking sheet in between and that'll help hold those apart. So from the previous pages and then on the next one I just had an off cut and what was that that was I did some jelly printing on book page I do love jelly printing on book pages so that was jelly printing on book page and that was the edge that I snipped off so I love to keep those pieces and there you go that's covered up those holes now that by the way see how I sewed on her hair I think that's a bit cute so um so there you go so so ha ha <laughs> so yeah you can see the back there that's actually her hair that i just sewed over simply to give it a bit more texture when i was doing the page edges so here you go there my friends is how i went i added a little bit of lace on the back inside there as well there's the tied piece on the right and there's a simple book page so they're the sorts of things that I'll go through this book and just play with. I hope you enjoyed and, you know, might help with some of your mistakes too. Who knows? I'd love it if you could leave me a comment below. Hit the like button if you enjoyed what you saw today. And of course, please subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you next time. And in the meantime, keep creating. Enjoy.